people on the mat can be on your back. The best, better way to be. You can use any props at this time if you need to, just to find that comforting position. You just close down the eyes. And I always feel that if you open your palms to the ceiling, there's that feeling of just openness, that surrender, the subconscious feeling, the subconscious message to the brain, the rest of the body, just to experience it, the sensations, to bring your attention inward and try to shut out any outside distractions. So as I say, this breathing technique is called a four, seven, eight breathing technique. And it really is, you practice it, say, a couple of times during the day. The effects will get stronger. So if you find yourself sleepless and you practice this technique, then it should knock you out after a minute to two minutes. Just find the rhythm to your breathing, first of all. And when we say four, seven, eight, it's an inhale for four, a hold of the breath for seven, and then a whooshing open mouth exhalation for eight. But I will count you in, I'll count the hold, and I'll count the exhale. And we just do this for four breaths. So let's begin. Inhaling for one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, open the mouth, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, exhale, open mouth, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, one. Two, three, four, hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So that if you practice a couple of times a day, when you do experience those moments of insomnia. And just bring this breathing technique four, seven, eight into your breathing for the evening, and perhaps, hopefully, it will knock you out. So let's roll over onto your right side, taking the pressure away from the heart. Bring the hand in and just engage your arm muscles, your abdominal muscles, to push you up into a comfortable position. And then bring your knees. Come onto it, sitting on your knees and on your heels. Take the knees wide, just as comfortably wide. You don't need to extend them too wide. And if you want to, you take a cushion, plump it up if you want to, or roll a blanket, whichever one you want to do. Or you might not need anything at all. But we're going to come down into a child's pose. We're, we're holding all of these poses for about five minutes uh, this evening, which is longer than we have been holding in the past, but I um, want you to feel the benefits of these poses. So I will set a timer. And we're going to just let the weight fall into the heels first, and then bring yourself down to the mat. The belly is soft, the elbows, the shoulders are soft. If you want to use a cushion, just have that cushion to support the body. And just let your head rest here. Maybe you don't want to have that on your body, maybe you want to just support your head. So you can bring the cushion like that, the elbow wide, and then just rest your head, or on the forehead, or the other way, whichever is comfortable for you. We're holding this pose for five minutes. I'll give you uh, a count um, during the course of this, um, this five-minute hold. So you can adjust the pose if you need to. 
if you wanted to change your head in the other direction, for example. But the idea is, is that you just release, you let the muscles go, you close down the eye, eyes, and just observe the sensations in the body, observe your breathing, so try and control it. And also just observe whatever pops into your mind. Don't hold on to those thoughts. Don't start running with a, a theme of thoughts. So it might be running from shopping to gardening to work issues to family issues, whatever it may be. Just let them come in and slip away again. Don't then start thinking, ah, oh, yes, but I need to do this at the shops. I need to get that. I need to make this. Just let the folk thoughts come in, observe them, let them go. Just find stillness in the pose, and if you are needing to move, then move mindfully, softly. Your muscles are relaxed, but if you suddenly jerk into a different sensation, into a different shape, then you're going to possibly give yourself an injury. And just relax, surrender the softness. Really allow the focus to be inward. Focus on your needs. And at any point, if you feel like you need to cleansing breath, you can inhale deeply, open the mouth and sigh out. That's perfectly okay. As I say, you're in your own safe space, your home space. Three minutes left in this pose. You're halfway in this pose. If you want to turn your head in the opposite direction just to get that balance, just move mindfully, being aware. One more minute in this pose.
to walk your hands back toward the body as you bring your body upright. You probably engage the arm muscle slightly, abdominal muscle slightly. And then lift your knees together so that you can come and sit on one hip and extend the legs out behind you. Just to open up the body here for a moment, just to feel that moment of transition. So take the hands behind you, lock the elbows and sink into your shoulder sockets. So head can be to your chest, you can look at it behind the back, whatever you want to do. And just again, you're keeping the attention inward, you're observing any sensations in the body, any tingling, any vibrations. Just think of it as that movement of energy, circulation of blood. And then we're going to move into our reclined butterfly pose. So um, if you're wanting it to be restorative, you'll need to take a cushion, a blanket behind you. We're going to bring our feet together, soles of the feet, and let the knees fall out. Don't worry about them being, the heels being close to the groin. And then you're taking a support, if you want to keep it restorative, you're taking a support down the spine. So just place the support at the base of the spine. And then you're allowing your body to fold back over it so that the shoulders wrap around the outside. So you're opening up the chest. And then make sure your head is supported. You don't want the head to hang back. You want your forehead and chin to either be in a line or even your forehead a little bit higher than your chin. And again, you allow the arms to open, palms of the hands open to the ceiling. If you feel an incredible stretch uh, um, on the inner thigh, then perhaps take a block or a book and just wedge them slightly on the underside of your thigh, the outer thighs, just to support your pelvic ligaments, just in case you feel there's too much of a stretch there, then you've got that support as well. Before again, you just allow yourself to recline in this butterfly pose. Feel what is right for you. If you don't want to use any supports at all, then I invite you just to come down flat to the mat with the knees open, palms open to the ceiling, arms a little bit away from the body, and just make sure the back of the neck is long with the chin just slightly tucked towards the chest. I'll set the timer now. And again, you have five minutes just to really feel yourself opening up in the pose. Feeling yourself slow down your nervous system. Feeling an awareness of your body, sensations. And hopefully just working towards better comfort within the body. Towards a more peaceful, restful, undisturbed night's sleep. It's not unusual at this time to suffer from a disturbed sleep. But it's so important to try and get a balanced sleep. You want to use it to sustain your energy, balance your emotions. Also, this really improves your work, your fitness performance. To your over overall health and well-being. Scientific investigations have shown that if you get less than five hours of sleep a night, it is the equivalent of perhaps as if you're a smoker. If your sleep is extremely disturbed, it alters your metabolism. Your body starts storing fat, so you actually start finding a link between obesity and a disturbed night's sleep as well. We're working to find that balance. And in this pose, we're opening the chest, we're getting more oxygen to your organs, to your brain. Relax the muscles. Enjoy the sensations. 
that feeling of softness and surrender. We're halfway in this place. Just lift your knees together now as we come out of this pose and extend the legs. And roll it over onto your right side again. Bring yourself up to a seated position. Although our body's been open with the chest, I still want to just to take the hands behind us, lock the elbows. Sink into the shoulder sockets, let the neck sink into the shoulder sockets. And again, just feel the sensations in this transition between the poses. Our next pose is a restorative bridge pose. So um, we use uh, our supports in this. We want to elevate our feet, our legs, and our spine. The only part that is going to be touching the floor is the back of the head and the shoulder blades. So we need to take something down from our hips to our spine, so it can be a cushion. Hold that blanket. Just have a, the blocks close towards the cushion, or if you haven't got blocks, then use books. Just have them reasonably close. So you're going to rest your heels on these blocks. And then, as I say, you're supporting the spine, but not so high up the spine so that your shoulders and the back of your neck don't drop onto the mat. You want the shoulders and the neck on the mat. So your legs are elevated, your hips are elevated, 
and your spine drops down in an arc in a bridge so that the shoulder blades, back of the neck and the head are to the mat. And then you're going to open the palms, close down your eyes and just find a soft and focused point to look at so that you can fall into that meditative state, observing your breath, observing your reaction to poses. And with your heart being that a little bit higher than your brain, you might find that your breath, because this is an inversion, you might find your breath alters slightly, becomes a little more shallow. But just try to breathe into it without controlling your breath, just try to breathe into it so that you can really find that sense of relaxation. And you want to find softness through the body. One of the first places to start is the face, the brow. Make sure the brow is smooth, not so completely holding a frown there. And then release the jaw, loosen the tongue. Perhaps even take the top of the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth so you know it's soft. Relax across the neck, the shoulders all the way down to the open palms, making sure you're not holding tension through the fingers. Come back to the spine, just feel it settle against the props, getting heavier. The softness through the belly, you can feel the hips getting heavier. And through the support, you almost feel a lightness in the legs. Just the heels touching the books, the blocks, whatever you're resting them on to support, keep them elevated. Just go the half way in this pose.
So bend the knees now and bring your feet flat to the floor. And just lift the body slightly as you engage through the abdominals to remove your supports. So your spine can be flat to the mat. And then you can extend your legs again. You're lying in Sabatana just for a moment to get a transition. And if you feel after the elevation of the hips and the legs, if you feel you need to pull the knees towards the chest, that's perfectly okay as well. You can rock side to side if that's what your body's asking for. Listen to it, respond to it. This is another way of us getting to know our bodies. Or we can just lie still in Sabatana. And our next pose is a counter pose to the slight back bend that we had in that restorative view agenda. Coming up, so remember to roll to your right side, hook up to a comfortable seated position, bringing your body upright. And we're coming into our seated forward fold. So this is going to just elongate the base of the spine here. But we're going to find compression, at the, this constriction at the front of the chest really creates space at the back of the ribs. Again, you can use a cloth here if you want to have any sort of support on top of your thighs to rest the body on, or you can take something under the knees if you feel you've got really tight hamstrings, tight hip flexors. Arms can be either down the length, palms open, or you have your palms together, just cross the thumbs in a, in a loose lock and extend them towards you, or you can wrap them underneath and thread them under the backs of the legs. Again, have the palms open just so you can rest your head here. So whatever is right for you. If you want to tilt your pelvis a little bit more forward, then just take the seat bones slightly under a little higher elevation. So whether that's a roll of blanket or the edge of the cushion, just see what is right for you. But as we roll forward here, if you want your pelvis to tilt forward rather than rounding like this. So you want to just tilt it forward so that you can find that length and then let the body fold down. We're going to set the timer. We're just going to hold this for three minutes. So again, just stand the body, making sure that you're not holding any tension through the hands, the toes, and the session through the face. So make a good softness through the body. Scan the body, let it be a wave of softness, going from the top of the head all the way down to the toes. As we hold this pose, be quiet in the mind, feeling new energy, release tension across the shoulders, across the lower back. You can feel it get heavier if you open up more in these poses. You're able to access those deeper areas of the body again. That's the prop. That is stopping you moving further. So just reduce it and fold it or remove it completely, whatever might be relevant to you to your situation. So we're just over halfway in this pose now. As you observe your body, think about the breath, the constriction of the organs at the front of the torso, 
the breath really expanding the rib cut at the back of the torso. Walk the hands back towards the body as you come out of this pose and unroll the spine, lifting the head and the chin last of all. And you place the hands behind you again. You just want to open up through the torso after that compression. Let your head fall where it needs to fall, whether it's to the chest or let your hand back, your close. You can move it gently between those two positions anyway. Observe tingling after sensation, vibrations, whatever you may be experiencing. We're going beyond the muscle, accessing the deeper tissue in the body, the ligaments, the cartilage, really working on your synovial fluid as well. We're going to come into a twist and a slight back bend here with our cat pulling tail pose. So several options here. Let's all start on the right side. You might want to just rest on your right elbow. You might want to rest on your right arm with the elbow bent slightly so you can rest there. And then you're going to extend the upper leg away from you and the lower leg bend it at the knee, bringing the heel towards the bottom. The upper arm, the circle is up and back so that you can maybe just Hook your hand around the inside of the foot, either on the toes, around the ankle. Don't worry if you can't reach. Just send your arm back there and just keep the lower leg knee bent and the heel towards the bottom. Relaxed though. So if you have got a hold, that's great. If you haven't, don't worry. And this upper leg, you have options here. You can bend it at the knee now if you want to and just hook your other hand on the knee if you don't want to support your head. If you want to take it further, then you can take your hand around the toes on the straight leg. And then you're going to roll your upper shoulder back towards the floor. So you're opening your chest towards the ceiling. And your gaze can be at the ceiling, or you can take it in the opposite direction, or you can rest it looking at your upper leg face forward. So whatever is right for you. Please don't worry if you haven't got the grip on either foot. Just open the chest to the ceiling. Keep the lower leg bent, the heel towards the bottom. If you need to use a cushion for the head, that's absolutely fine. If you want to place a cushion under the inside of your upper leg, that's also fine. So you have options. We're holding this for three minutes, so we've got time to open up into this. Any twist in the spine, the great detoxer. It also just helps massage the nerve endings. The spine, in any of the practices, considered your second brain because every nerve ending can be traced back to the spine. You always need to look after it, make you know, feel young, make you feel healthy.
just over halfway on this side. release the feet or the foot or just bring the chest back towards the floor as you extend the legs back behind you you're lying on your tummy with long legs and you can stack your forearms and just rest your head on your forearms and our crocodile pose just feel that opening through the body feel your spine realign after the twist Feel the heaviness coming into the belly as it sinks towards the mat. And then we're going to take it on to the other side. So although it is called a uh, cat pulling tail pose, don't actively pull the foot. You're just sort of holding it there in position rather than pulling it close to the bottom. So come to rest on the left side now. And again, either support your head on your rested elbow or you can lie it on the elbow. Upper leg extend forward away from you. Lower leg bend at the knee and take the heel towards the bottom. So you draw the knee further back towards the back of the mat. Upper arm, take it up to the ceiling and circle it back and behind you, keeping the arm long so you might be able to just put the fingers around the toes or the palm around the inside of the foot. When you've got that length, think about what you want to do with your upper leg, whether you want to bend the knee or if you want to take your hand away and take the toes. And then roll towards your spine so you're opening your chest to the ceiling. And then contemplate where you want your gaze, where it's comfortable for your neck. And again, please feel free to move mindfully, taking any props, either under the extended leg, under the belly, or under the head, wherever you feel is right. You have three minutes to work into this pose. Although there'll be some tension in the hands if you're holding the feet or the legs, just try to soften through the arms. It's the, the length and the weight of the arms that just extend this stretch. And then really quieting the mind. And if you find stillness, you'll find you get a greater mental clarity. It's a really good mental detox when you hold these poses. The longer you hold, the more you have a chance to slow down your breathing, slow down your nervous system, and allow your body to fully rest and digest.
the half hour in this moment. And release, release the feet, unbind the hands. And again, just roll back onto your tummy, extending the legs, long legs. And relax the head down, the forehead onto your stack, forearms. Just allow the moment for the spine to settle. Just feel that shift of movement within the body. And then roll over onto your back. You just make like a star in your pentacle pose. So the legs go wide, the arms come above the head, and the arms are wide as well. Our star man, pentacle pose. You just feel that deep sense of realization. Our final pose is a pose that quite often people say can cure anything that ails us as a restorative pose, and it's our legs up the wall pose. So move your, your mat, or you may not need a mat, or move a bit of support towards a, a clear area of wall. And there's several ways of doing that. If you've got tight hamstrings, if you've got very long legs, then you might want to be a little bit further away from the wall. If you've got short legs, like me, and you want to be a little bit closer, you're going to start with your hip towards the wall. If you've got long legs, just be a little bit further away. Have a, a support of some sort, whether it's a cushion or a block or a rolled up blanket, that's fine as well. And you're just going to literally Come down onto your back and take the legs up to the, the wall, or however close you want it to be. And you're going to extend your legs so that the heels are just supported by the door frame, the wall, whatever it may be. Then using your elbows, using your abdominal muscles, the, the next stage, if you want to elevate it further, is supporting your hips. So just bend the knees, lift the hips, and just place something underneath. So that it's not pinching your back, it's not um, uh, pinching the sacrum at all. Make sure you position it so that it's comfortable and that your legs are just able to be supported by the wall. You feel that length, that draining. Then you open your palms and have them either side of your body. If you don't want to do that, you can place one hand below the belly, one hand on the heart, wherever you feel is right for you. And this is such a magical pose when you get into that comfortable position. 
that supported position. So we're going to hold this for 10 minutes. I'll wake you up after 10 minutes. It's a long time, I know, but it is such a, a wonderful pose. So release yourself to the sensations. Release yourself to your breath. If at any point you start to feel tingling, then just bring the soles of the feet together and then bend the knees so you can draw the heels closer down towards your body. If you feel tingling, otherwise keep your leg, legs elevated and supported. If you don't want the bolster under the hips, that's absolutely fine to take that away as well. Just have the spine flat towards the floor. I invite you now to close down the eyes and relax to the sensation. This is a magical pose. It really stimulates the blood flow, it drains. Helps with edema, helps with anxiety, helps with insomnia.
few more minutes in this time. Moving mindfully and aware of this elevation that we're in higher, the brain, the legs, the limbs. Just bend the knees, and if you've got a support under your hips, just lift them slightly so you can slide that support away. And then roll onto your side to move mindfully to come back up to a comfortable seated position. And just feel yourself settle here for a moment as your spine is above your hips. Again, you might want to just to elevate your seat bones slightly so that you can feel your spine is directly above the hips. So you feel yourself just come back to being upright after that elevation. I just want to take you through a few little neck, uh, neck rolls just to release any tension that you might be holding there. For a day, perhaps of being over the computer, over the easel, your painting chart, I'm not sure. Okay, so just drop the chin down towards the chest. And again, you can close down the eyes if you want to. Just hold it here as you breathe in and out through the chest and out through the nose. More mindfully, just take the chin all the way over towards your left shoulder, lifting the chin up slightly. Holding it here, and then drop the chin down to your shoulder, take it all the way across the collarbone to the other shoulder, lifting it up, keeping that side profile, and then allow it coming back down. Just do that a couple more times, really slowly moving with your breath, coming down on the exhale, inhale, and starting to lift the chin up. Make sure you do an equal number side to side.
and then come back to your neutral neck position. And then lift it up and mindfully keeping your neck long to start to lower the head, the back of the head towards the back of the spine. You're opening up through the front of the throat. You bring the teeth together, get the jawline profile. If you want to bring the lower set of teeth over the top of your upper set, just increases that stretch, increases that profile. We're energizing through the open throat, opening up the thyroid. And mindfully, bring the chin back to a neutral position so that the head like a balloon, the neck is like the string, our body is like the weight below. I've taken you through some poses to really help you with any sleepless nights you may be having. Remember the breathing exercise as well. But thank you for letting me guide you through your yin restorative yoga tonight. Make sure you drink plenty of water to help with that blood circulation. And now, of course.